Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today is Monday, which means it's time for an episode of Loadout, the series where you guys, the viewers, get to pick a gun and customization for me to use. The way you do this is you leave a comment down below letting me know what kind of weapon and accessories you'd like me to run with, and I will pick one of the top rated comments. Today's top comment comes from Infinity. He says the Op CSGO style, the L115 6x or 8x scope, Op by default is a 1.8x, and we have the 14x variable zoom attached on there as well. We're going to run with a bipod, although I'm not going to be using that, and a flat wood paint job. For a sidearm, we have the Glock 18, a sniper's best friend with no attachments, default paint job. We're going to run with C4 and the DS3 decoy. Any grenade except minis and impacts, so I'm going with the M67, and sniper as the field upgrade. It's nowhere near as effective as in CS terms of damage, but this should recreate the aesthetics closely with similar gadgets and grenades. I thought it was a good idea considering you've been playing more CS lately, and this might be some fun. Now for the most part this is the same rifle used in Counter-Strike. AWP more commonly referred to as AWM in real life which stands for Arctic Warfare Magnum. In Counter-Strike it stands for Arctic Warfare Police. Fun fact about the L15 is that the longest confirmed sniper kill ever was done using this rifle and it was done twice by a British sniper taking out two Taliban machine gunners at 2,475 meters away. That's pretty freaking hard to do in Battlefield, let alone real life. To give you a better idea of that distance, pay attention to when I get a headshot and it gives me that marksman headshot bonus. Right there, I got a 91. Uh, that means that I was 91 meters away from that target that I shot. So the, the target that this British sniper shot was so insanely far away, it must have been really hard to see the target. In addition, the atmospheric conditions must have had to be perfect because the bullet's travel time literally puts it in the air for seconds. You could sit there with the stopwatch and count down to the point of bullet impact. Also, this is a fun 24 kill streak that I had on Gold Mud Railway. There's probably few spots in the game that are better to snipe than Gold Mud Railway on Rush. Now, just in case some of you guys are wondering, hey, what the heck is this new sniper rifle that I've never seen before? This is actually the L96A1. They had the name changed to the L115, which is a more accurate representation of what rifle it is. And despite this rifle being one of the premier long range combat sniper rifles, in game, its muzzle velocity doesn't necessarily reflect that. It has a 630 meter per second muzzle velocity, which is okay at best. I honestly don't know why they give sniper rifles anything slower than a 700 meter per second muzzle velocity for most rifles, especially ones that are th shooting the 338 Lapua round because that thing is a beast. And an average weighted Lapua round is actually going to be going about 900 meters per second. So obviously there's a bit of in-game discrepancy and I find it a little bit disappointing since uh, DICE went through so much trouble to make realistic weapon physics in the game and then not give weapons realistic properties. I understand that they do it for balance purposes, but I don't know. I just think it would be kind of cool to at least with sniper rifles give them more realistic muzzle velocity. But then they might be in danger of making overpowered sniper rifles. And it's possible. I don't know. I don't think sniper rifles are overpowered, but they're certainly well suited for 64 player rush games. That's for sure. Now you're seeing me use this a lot in CQB right here. The Glock 18 plus C4 is a force to be reckoned with in close quarters. Vehicles, infantry, anybody, you better beware because the G18 will drop you in a second and that C4 will take out those tanks very quickly. Now, if we had to make comparisons between the performance of this weapon in Battlefield and Counter-Strike, the Counter-Strike one would clearly win, but it's not really a fair comparison because the games are entirely different. The op in Counter-Strike has a zero travel time for its muzzle velocity, so literally whatever your crosshair is on when you pull that trigger, it is going to hit that target. Much different from Battlefield, where you have that travel time and you have to compensate for movement of your enemy player and you have to lead in front of them. It's a much more complicated sniping game in Battlefield, whereas in Counter-Strike you just have easy peasy limb and squeezy, pull the trigger with the crosshair on your target, and they're dead. Not to mention, you don't even need to headshot your target with an op in Counter-Strike. If you shoot through a door or an object in Counter-Strike, it will lessen the damage taken, in which case a body shot might not do the job, but otherwise you're pretty much good to go. If the Counter-Strike op existed in Battlefield, it would essentially be cheating. It would be even better than those incredibly good sniper rifles you can find in the game already, because it would have zero travel time and still be a one-shot kill, so there'd be no getting around it, it just wouldn't work in Battlefield. 
It's not to say it's overpowered in Counter-Strike because Counter-Strike has a money system. So it takes the whole overpowered weapon concept and throws it out the window because if a gun's really good, you just apply a monetary value to it that makes sense in how good the weapon actually is. We don't have that in Battlefield, so we have to try and balance all these weapons against each other when in real life, some guns just are better than others. Now, in terms of how this rifle actually performs in Battlefield compared to other rifles, it's pretty good overall. The muzzle velocity, as I said, isn't great, but in Battlefield, it's pretty decent compared to the other bolt actions. It's got a smaller magazine size, but it makes up for it in rate of fire, so you might need to reload a bit more with this bolt action rifle, but as long as you're keeping your distance from your targets, then it shouldn't be too much of an issue. I could easily see this being somebody's favorite bolt action rifle, but for me personally, I still like the SRR61 because not only does it have a decent muzzle velocity, slightly slower than this one, it has a far lesser bullet drop, which means you can just aim for the head at really far ranges and not even have to worry about that drop. It's more of a personal preference at this point because most of the ranges you're going to be engaging people with bolt action rifles, the L115 is going to be just fine for it. But I guess I just like having a rifle that I know can absolutely wreck people at extreme ranges, like 300 meters or further. And with that in mind, the 14 times variable zoom certainly does come in handy if you know you're going to be taking some extreme long range shots and you just want to make sure you hit those headshots rather than the body shots because at that kind of range, as soon as somebody takes a body shot and grabs some cover, you're never going to see them again, at least until they have full health again. As far as this loadout goes, it's pretty much perfect except for the bipod. You want the straight pull bolt on there so you can maximize your rate of fire whether you're aiming down sights or not. I will never use a bipod as a sniper and nor should you. It makes you an incredibly easy target and gives you little to no benefit. But anyway, that does wrap it up for this episode of Loadout. And don't forget to leave your comments down below letting me know what you would like me to run with for next week's episode. Hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.